The grapple is the ability with the highest skill cap in Apex Legends, and a major contributing factor to Pathfinder's skill ceiling as a whole. With a grapple as a base, there are infinite amount of options with how you approach a fight, how you rotate, or how you would escape. The grapple can be combined with most other movement techniques, such as the wall hops, edge sliding, bunny hopping, or tap strafing, which is a movement technique that I covered in a previous video. As with many techniques, what makes a successful movement combo, you know, a long grapple or a quick reposition is equal, if not greater part of your knowledge of the map the feeling of the movement and knowing exactly where the grapple can will take you than just the execution of the technique. And I'm stressing this because this is why I've hesitated on creating a grapple guide in the past because of how much skill behind the grapple is based not of your technical skill with the grapple but rather on your experience and knowledge. That being said, there's still a lot of fundamentals, there's basics, techniques, and tricks to teach you about, so here we are. A skilled disciple in the school of the otter can cross any distance with incredible flow by utilizing a number of skills and techniques, but today, we're going to focus on the grapple. Remember that if you do find value from this video, do not hesitate to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new guides, and of course, make sure to smash the like button if you did enjoy the video, so I know that you enjoyed the video. Now, the last school of the otter guide absolutely blew up, and I think we're about 2,000 likes and counting, so let's see if we can beat that and get maybe 2,500 likes on this video. Anyways, thank you so much for that, guys. Let's get into it. Yo! So before we're heading into the grapple mechanics themselves, let me just talk to you about air strafing. If you don't know what it is, it's a fundamental move that makes perfect grapples, but it also allows you to turn midair, you know, out of a grapple, octane, jump pad, or just when you're dropping off a ledge. It's a very good skill to learn if you don't know about it. If you want to get good at air strafing, the most common technique is getting an octane jump pad and, you know, put it in the firing range or whatever, and then just jump on it. As you are midair, turn your view sideways and move your character the same direction which you are looking. If you were on PC, this would be a or D while you're turning left or right. When this technique is later applied to a grapple, you also add in a forward input, which will be W on PC. If you aren't confident with your air strafing or you may be just a little bit rusty with this, make sure to spend some extra time in the firing range practicing the speed of which you turn, when you can air strafe, and such and such. Just get a good feel of this technique because a lot of the movement techniques might need some corrections mid-air and if you cannot control yourself mid-air, you will not be able to get the maximum yield out of your grapples. So here are some of the fundamentals or the basics that you need to know in order to get a good grapple. One of the most simple ones and the most common ones that people get wrong is that you need to make sure that you jump when your grapple connects. Most grapple techniques require a good timing of the jump. Uh, unless you're doing super grapples, you will want to jump right when the grapple hits the wall. This will launch you upwards and make sure you get maximum momentum. Another way to abuse momentum if maybe you want to get over a roof, you want to jump over a ledge instead of grappling to it, is by not only jumping when you grapple, hits but actually strafing using your movement keys in the opposite direction of where you want to go. The momentum will lead you away from the wall or the grapple and give you more of an arc to allow you to do more move. All of these moves are very much based on knowing when your grapple will break. Your grapple will always break whenever you look more than 90 degrees away from it. Now if you want a slingshot, you want to move around a target or whatever, you gotta keep looking at the grapple until you made the actual move and once you are in the momentum or, the, or you have the type of velocity that you do want you just look away from the grapple and this will break the grapple and you will be able to continue forward if you want to get the maximum range grapple aka a slingshot what you want to do is look towards a point above you you make as much space as possible between you and the target so when reticle is blue you are in range when it's yellow you're not so obviously you would want to be right where you're in range and then you just hit the grapple once the grapple hits, you jump and you start strafing either to the right or the left and then you counteract it with another strafe to the other direction. You keep experimenting with this and get the timing down. As you progress throughout the grapple, make sure to keep your eyes on the actual grapple and when you are in the direction that you want, when you feel like it's about to start pulling you back in, that's when you flick your mouse or you turn away, break the line of contact and continue forwards. As I mentioned earlier, this takes a crap ton of experience, knowledge and just practice. Don't be frustrated if you can't get it right straight away. If you do want more tips on this, Moki Sniper has an in-depth guide on how to do a proper slingshot. But we're gonna keep going because I have a lot more things to cover. Because we're moving to something new. We're gonna be looking at the Super Grapple. So, the Super Grapple is a faster grapple which gives you more of an initial momentum and when executed properly, absolutely just slingshots you really far. I, I don't know how far. It's far. Like, just look at this example. It's really good. So, how do I do this? It's actually kind of easy. Obviously, it will take some practice knowledge etc but all you have to do in practice is make sure that the grapple is well in range you look at the edge of whatever you want to grapple let's say this wall here 
move your reticle slightly off, maybe a few pixels off, to the point where it's no longer blue, but instead yellow. Then all you have to do is just grapple like usual. Now, the timing for the jump is a little bit different. This is something you're gonna have to play around with, but when you execute the super grapple properly, this is what it looks like. Now, thanks to this super grapple, I can build insane momentum from seemingly nothing. So like I said previously, there's too many different ways to utilize a grapple, but here are some useful grapple techniques that I frequently use. Grapple hops. Grapple the ground in front of you and jump as soon as the grapple hits, propelling you upwards. Cancel the grapple by crouching or by hitting shift and then just shoot your enemies from above. They can also be used to do a very quick reposition because of how fast this grapple is, you are always at a guaranteed lowly 10 second cooldown. Another really fast and kind of useless way of doing this is by looking straight down, grappling and hopping, giving you a quick but kind of useless bounce. But if you want to use this bounce to maybe go the other way around or something like that, all you have to do is chain a tap straight around the end of the jump and turn around to reverse the direction. Grapple tap strafe. Tap strafing in conjunction with the grapple is probably one of the most common grapples and tap strafes I do. By grappling like normal, maybe by, you know, doing a super grapple or by doing a quick slingshot. As soon as I land on the ground, I instantly slide jump and I bounce with a tap strafe. This allows me to change the direction on a whim as I keep the momentum going. Maybe I misposition myself or there's an object in the way that I need to maneuver around. Or maybe I just want to jump into someone and shoot them. I've also successfully chained the tap straight with the grapple to juke out opponents. The sky's the limit. Indoors grapple. This grapple is named by caution, but I figured I'd throw it in there anyways. The indoors grapple is basically a slingshot grapple, but in a smaller form. You have a smaller movement, you don't move as much, and you break the grapple way earlier. This requires a very good understanding of when to break off your grapple and it's something you'd have to experiment a lot with on your own. Stopping animation lag. Now this takes a lot of practice. You need to have good understanding of your velocity when you drop off a ledge, but also how fast you can grapple as a pathfinder. By perfectly timing your grapple coming off of a high drop, you can actually negate your animation stutter completely. This next trick isn't exactly a grapple trick, but it's really good to know. You can also skip animation lag by landing by or touching a wall. If you land next to and facing a wall, this will completely negate the animation like you can also accomplish the same thing by kicking a wall on the way down the kick or brushing up against the wall would obviously have to be done at a height where you would not actually get an animation stagger when you actually do land so it's a bit tricky but it's still preferred to getting caught with your pants down as you landed from a drop over 100 meters So let's say you do a maximum range slingshot or a super grapple or whatever, a good grapple with a lot of momentum. Yeah, you could have been soaring through the air and landed a little bit far ahead and look really cool by doing so. But in the ways of the school of the otter, what you need to do is chain movement combinations together. The most common and the most simple one is just by instead of landing on your feet coming out of a grapple, you want to land with a slide. Just keep sliding and you'll move a lot farther forward than you would just by running. As a quick aside, because I didn't mention this in the guide already, you want to make sure that you actually land with a bit of horizontal momentum because this is the only way to continue the movement of the grapple into other techniques. By landing straight down or at a very steep angle, you will lose all your forward momentum and you will get stuck in animation lag. As soon as you land, you can also continue to move with a bunny hop. I'm not entirely sure what the gains are from bunny hopping instead of sliding when you land, but it does give you a little bit more control and you can still opt to start sliding if you do feel like it. Both a B hop and a slide into B hop or whatever can all be followed by a tap strafe and other movement techniques. Another benefit of sliding out of a grapple is called edge boosting. By sliding over an edge and hitting a jump pit, but at the right time, you will actually gain even more momentum. Then you just convert it back into the slide and you keep moving. If you do opt to slide coming out of a grapple, Grapple, you can actually chain it together with a wall hop. So even though your grapple looks like a slowdown and it's about to fizzle out completely, you can actually get up close to a wall and pull off a wall hop to get an additional boost and keep your momentum going for a little bit longer. Once again, this is not a list of all the different ways you can use a grapple in Apex Legends, but it should cover most of it. This is all the types of movements that would fall under the school of the otter, aka, well, the moves I use. Did I miss something? Is there something that you use you want to share with the rest of the class? Let me know in the comments remember to hit subscribe and the bell button to make sure you don't miss any more guides let's see if we can hit that like goal and i'll see you all next time